I'm pretty sure that's not what was just said. I think we're all familiar with just how odd it is that these short, clipped lines convey any meaning at all, much less enough to engage in negotiations with Jabba the Hutt. But there they are, and it's our job as rabid, over-analytic fans to figure out what's going on here, right? This language is called Ubis, and is the preferred language of bounty hunter Boosh. Leia takes the persona of Boosh as a disguise to enter Jabba's palace, and she negotiates in Ubis, using C-3PO as a translator. Ubis sounds really repetitive and limited, and it's almost comically simplistic given the translations given for certain phrases. You know, you know. 50,000, no less. It might be kind of surprising, but this language has actually gotten some attention in the constructed language, or conlang, community. David J. Peterson, who developed the Dothraki language for Game of Thrones, actually makes an example of this language in his book, The Art of Language Invention. Peterson has a somewhat dim view of Ubis, though. After struggling to justify the limited vocabulary and lack of context, he ultimately calls it poorly constructed and not worthy of serious consideration. Challenge accepted. Now, in order to start understanding Ubis, we have to tackle its phonology. What sounds are in this language? We don't have a whole lot to go off, but here is every Ubis word that we know. It's not a lot, but there's more here than you might think. Attempts have already been made to break down the sounds we're hearing here. David J. Peterson transcribes these words as such. Matthew Shields of the Makalang blog transcribes these words somewhat differently. But I wasn't satisfied with either of these approaches. I analyzed the lines myself and heard a number more sounds than previously identified. There's actually a surprising amount of nuance in there, where both before assumed a Y sound for all three words in the first line. I heard a subtle difference between the leading vowel sound in the first two words as opposed to the third. It was very similar to my experience with Japanese, which has words with both ia and ya. For instance, yaku means headquarters, and yaku means to grill. Going back to ubis, we have yate, yate, yoto. Listening to these words very carefully, we can hear the subtle difference between yate, yate, yoto. And we can also hear that in the third word, it's not pronounced yoto, but rather yoto, with two distinct vowel sounds. So I've chosen to transliterate these words this way, spoken without an ubi's accent, yate, yate, yoto. In this phrase alone, we have five different vowel sounds and combinations. On to the second phrase. Yoto, yoto. This sounds a lot like a repetition of the third word in the previous phrase. But in fact, if you listen really closely, the second word has a leading consonant sound. Let's slow it down. Yoto. It's really subtle, but would definitely be audible to a native speaker. It's like not flipping your R's while speaking Spanish. So this phrase is not yoto, yoto, as previously assumed, but rather something like this, yoto, yoto. The third phrase is... A, yoto. The A is easy. We covered this vowel sound before, at the end of yate. The second word might at first sound like our previous yoto, but notice that the stress is now on the first syllable. Yoto. Both David J. Peterson and Matthew Shields noticed this, but neither addressed the fact that this appears to be an entirely different word for another reason. It's not yoto, it's... Yoto. It's not the yoto. sound from before, but more of an yoto. sound. These vowels are formed differently and fall on different parts of the IPA's vowel chart. It's not merely stress. The final translated phrase in this sequence is... Yoto. Which also introduces a new vowel sound, a, as in the word at. The O and the A we've seen before. Furthermore, we have two untranslated lines in Ubis. Zebus. Ducha. Zebus appears to add no new vowel sounds, but Ducha adds an U sound that we actually haven't heard before. Fortunately for us, this justifies the U sound in the pronunciation of Bush. So now we have the most complete list of vowels we can possibly hope to have for Ubis. On the left is how I've romanized Ubis, and on the right are the international phonetic alphabet equivalents for each sound. Okay, so that's vowels. Let's cover consonants really quickly because it's way easier. We have a T sound. No. We have an approximate Y sound. Yeah. We have a really quick consonant sound that sounds like a G. G. Yeah. There's a CH sound. Yeah. And with the final two lines. Zebus. Do
So there they all are. Same deal as before. Romanization on the left, IPA on the right. So that's the complete phonology of ubis. Well, as far as we know anyway. But what does it all mean? Let's take a look at each line and their supposed translations. Yate, yate, yoto. And we're already up a creek without a paddle, it seems. We have three words, two of which are the same word, yet we're apparently communicating three separate ideas here. Coming, receiving a bounty, and this Wookiee. It's a bit of an executive decision, but I think it's very safe to assume that Wookiee here is contextual, and perhaps bounty as well. Boosh might be saying, yate, yate, yoto. And the writers merely thought it would help the audience if the bounty and this Wookiee were added for clarity. The line could also be, as Matthew Shield suggests, something along the lines of yate, yate, yoto. Though I hesitate to lift too much from Matthew Shields, I really like the idea that yoto means money. But I'm actually seeing some commonalities between yate and yoto. It kind of sounds like we might have some verb conjugations here, with tei and to being two different verb forms. Regular verbs and ubis might often be conjugated with certain endings beginning with t. Tei and to are simply different tenses, or perhaps the same tense but with different accompanying pronouns. Like in Spanish, which has different verb forms for me, you, he, we, they, etc. I could see it going either way with ubis, but I personally like the idea that ubis doesn't have tense. No past tense, no present tense, no future tense, nothing. But we still have the verb endings to worry about. These, I think I'll attribute to pronouns. In this case, I think we're dealing with come and bounty. I don't want to get too far away from the subtitle, but we're going to change bounty into a verb. Yate means I come, and yoto means you pay. And what of the repeated I come? Well, there are a lot of solutions to this, but I like to assume that it's the best that ubis can do to speak more eloquently, or making what they're saying a little more grandiose. Like saying, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but with a verb rather than an adverb. I come, I come, simply sounds more eloquent and impressive to ubis speakers, who have little in way of auxiliary words that other languages might use to beef up the importance or magnitude of their words. You know, you know. Now this phrase is clearly related to the word for you pay, but it's confusing how we get 50,000 with this. A logical conclusion would be that the second word is 50,000, literally, but it's almost identical to the previous word and apparently also shows characteristics of a verb. Matthew Shields assumes that they're the same word, and by doubling the word, Bush is asking for doubling the amount, 25 to 50. But I want to do something different. It's possible that in ubis, any numerical value discussed in financial transactions is spoken of as a form of the verb to pay, but it's all rolled into one word in ubis. Come on down to the store and $49.99 yourself a new pair of electrobinoculars. Something like that. However, that would mean that 50,000 is a tiny little clipped g sound, which is possible. In Mandarin Chinese, the word for 100 million is e. So a tiny sound for a huge number is not too far-fetched. It's very possible that ubis has a sort of verbal shorthand for commonly expressed numerical values. Perhaps 100, 500, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, and 50,000. So here's my quick number chart for shorthand transaction totals. Tioto, tioto, zioto, chioto, ioto, gyoto. There's our gyoto. 50,000, no less. 3PO's addition of no less is likely because ubis has ways of softening their expressions. For instance, using Japanese as an example again, both harai and haratte are imperative forms of to pay, that is, commanding the listener to pay. But the former is clipped, no nonsense, and ultimately considered a rude form of the verb. The latter is somewhat more polite. Ubis might have something similar, and not using a more polite verb ending might imply that there's no room for negotiations. Hey, your toe. Because he's holding a thermal detonator. This one has a lot less context because C-3PO's translation is more than ever before without a doubt not a translation at all, but simply a theatrical reaction to what's happening. I really doubt that the actual Ubi's line is... Hey, your toe. I mean, it's possible, but I think we already pushed it a little with 50,000. So let's try to keep this grounded and assume that the given translation is only barely literal. But what do we have here? Well, it actually looks like we have a similar pronoun structure as our first line, an A for me and an O for you. But it looks like the first word is 
only the verb ending or perhaps only a pronoun. I'm going out on a limb here to say that this word is actually something of a part of speech that draws attention to the actions of the associated pronoun. So a is kind of like, look at me or allow me to demonstrate. Following this structure, all in the right context would have the same function, but drawing attention to you. If I wanted to say something like, all right, prove it, or let's see it, I might simply say, all. Jamba asks for an explanation for paying such a large price. Bush dramatically puts the ball in his court by saying, a, and ramps up the suspense a little bit as it implies some kind of revelation. The second word has our you verb form, so Bush is saying you do something, but it's not pay this time. It's way easier if it is though. Simply repeating you pay while holding a weapon should be plenty enough context, but you pay is your toe, not your toe, which sounds to me like an entirely different word, unfortunately. So what does it mean? What could Bush be saying here that takes the form of a you verb? You die, maybe? That actually works pretty well. After all, Jabba has asked for a reason why he must pay. Given how limited its grammar is, Ubi's likely relies on the context of the previous statement for conditional statements. Bush doesn't need to say, if you don't pay, you'll die, because Jabba is already basically asking what will happen if he doesn't pay, or at least that's how this question might be worded if he were speaking Ubis. So if we were having this conversation entirely in Ubis, we might translate the lines this way, pay me 50,000, no less. And what happens if I don't? Well, let me clear things up a bit. You'll die. Makes sense to me. Yato. I feel like this one is pretty easy. Let's just translate it, agreed. But it also looks like we have a you form verb in there. So maybe Yato. means you are agreeable. And perhaps cha is the somewhat more polite verb ending we talked about earlier. Bush is now being agreeable and has shifted his tone to more polite forms. Our final two Ubi's phrases are untranslated and have no context. So any translations of these phrases have to be completely made up. Ziba. The first is what appears to be a response to Bib Fortuna, interjecting with He's Which is almost exactly what we hear Jabba say translated as 15. 15. So why is Bib Fortuna walking up to Boosh saying 15 and leaving? And what does Zebus mean? Well, Boosh's final deal of 35,000 was only 15,000 less than his highest offer. So I'm just going to assume that Bib is congratulating Boosh like a casino congratulating you on winning a jackpot, even if it means they might be losing money on you. He's like, wow, 15,000, good job. And Boosh says, Zebus. Let's say that this is thank you. And then Boosh apparently turns toward Boba and says, Doo Again, we see the more formal and polite verb form. So maybe Boosh is saying something like, how was that? Perhaps respectfully asking for an evaluation from an A-list bounty hunter. Again, for these lines, there's really no way to know that we're even barking up the right tree, but they seem to work and fit into the general structure that we've established. It's been a crazy journey, but who would have known that this odd, supposedly repetitive and oversimplistic language might actually have a sensible structure? Now, again, most of this is just speculation and my own imagination, but I think it works. And even if this language is poorly constructed, as David J. Peterson suggests, I think that trying to break down the sounds, vocabulary and grammar of what we see on screen was a fun and worthwhile exercise that's going to add a lot to my enjoyment of the scene next time I watch it. What are your thoughts? Do you have any other explanations? or theories that could explain this language? Is doing this stuff really a complete waste of time? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more videos like this, let me know that too. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and sharing this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time.